Hi, this is Rick Manelius at rickmanelius.com and today I wanted to go over the very basics of content type design in Drupal. Now, this is sort of a very intro level uh, discussion here. Uh, we are not even gonna go and log into Drupal here, but we're basically just trying to get a high level overview of like what content types are and how to best use them for people who are just getting into the CMS um, arena for the first time. So when most people think of content, they just think of it as that generic word. There's they're just some nebulous thing that you put in all your stuff and there's sort of no differentiation. Where in fact, with Drupal, a lot of the power comes out of divvying up that, you know, that one thing called content into different types, be it uh, events, blog posts, articles, uh, pages, products, you name it. So um, now you can certainly use one type, but again, you don't really get the power of the system by doing that. So let's just go over a very small example. Let's say you're creating a new site and you want to, you're, you're, you're working on doing a site for a band and you have two different content types. You basically have events and you have blog posts, you know, things from the road, you know, images, etc. So why would you separate these two? Well, they have different structural needs. Events can have both a title, there's a description, you're gonna to have to have a location, a date, most likely a price, maybe a URL, where to obtain tickets, uh, and so forth. Um, whereas with a blog post, you probably only need to have a title and a body. Now, within that body, you can still stuff some images, um, you can stuff uh, YouTube videos, um, and you can you can still input other information, but for, at a grand scheme, at looking at this, the fields themselves, events have to have those sort of things, and you'd like to be able to sort by them, you'd like to be able to sort by date, maybe you want to sort by price, and, and et cetera, whereas a blog post, you really don't need to have those fields. Date and location wouldn't make sense in most situations, so you don't want to force your content type to have it. Now, now again, we're sort of with, uh, with great power comes great responsibility here. Um, you can start taking this to the extreme. Like, right, you start off with events and blog posts, but then you can say, my thoughts, my wishes, things I ate last Friday, you know, pets, products, TV shows, cool things. I mean, you can quickly like get way out of control with different content types. And I've seen this happen with some certain clients. Uh, the requirements come in and there's over 13 content types and that becomes a real problem um, for a couple reasons. Uh, the first is um, the fact that, I mean, it's just gonna confuse the user. You have so much stuff coming in here, but let's sort of talk about how to best clean this up. So first thing you wanna do is you want to sort of minimize the amount of clutter and, and, and reduce the length of these things. So if we look over here, I'm gonna talk about four tips and sort of um, moving into a better content type structure. So the first is to shorten up the names. Obviously things I ate last Friday is just too long. Um, it's better to be a little bit more general and you could say food because that you know could encompass things that you've ate last Friday, but it can also encompass a lot of other things. And you know, my wishes, my thoughts, those are generally the same type of thing. You may wanna uh, call them ideas. And I've already done one other tip, which is sort of converge and consolidate these different things. Um, cool things, um, you can call this Snowberry Shares. And TV shows, maybe you wanna just call it TV. So we still haven't reduced the problem. We've sort of just made it easier to get our head around some more generic uh, titles and so forth. The next thing you wanna do is go over the use case. Now, just because you can create 10 different you know, content types and et cetera, the next question is, you know, should you do it? Um, how often are you gonna talk about things that you're sharing or TV or products or pets, et cetera? If you're a band, you're most likely gonna focus solely on you know, tickets and you know, talking about being on the tour and maybe some images and so forth. So some of these would already get reduced down. You, you don't need to have them. So maybe we would say pets and maybe things, uh, you know, TV isn't really a useful one, but products is kind of useful. You could have some shirts, some CDs, things that you want to share, 
is pretty useful. Maybe you have some ideas for different bands, different tours. Food is probably not useful, so we'll eliminate it for now. Because um, realistically, you weren't going to make more than a single post, and it doesn't really make sense to make a content type that may not get used more than five times in the next two years on your site. So the last thing is to sort of look for similar um, structural requirements. So we want to see like you know if there are common elements to some of these these groups, and there are. So events needs a lot. It needs title, description, location, etc. Ideas probably only need to have a title and a body. Uh, products are going to need you know the title, the description, and they're going to need a price and possibly sizes or other attributes. So products is definitely a good one that has its own unique one where it shares things that you share, uh, maybe a title, body, and maybe a link. You know, maybe there's an external reference to it. And let's just say we had you know TV back just for you know argument's sake, and we could put in title body. So as of now, you can see that these two items right here <coughs> have a similarity to this blog post. So three different content types really are structurally almost the same. Um, and you know, it becomes redundant. And here's, here's where the issue lies. If you keep all three types, what happens when you wanna do a blog post that has to do with both ideas and TV? You're then forced to make a choice. You have to pick one among the others. Whereas, so there's not really, you know, content types make really hard lines between them. It's like it either is a product, it's, it's a, an event, it's a blog post, it's this or that. There really is sort of no leniency of kind of you know, fitting into two content types. What you're really interested more in there is a, what you're more interested in at that point is a taxonomic approach where you tag one content type uh, with numerous categories. So we, what we'd introduce here is we'd uh, introduce say a category, taxonomy. And that category could be ideas, TV, it could be um, images, it could be tour information, and it can basically expand out to um, whatever you want. And that's the beauty of a taxonomy because that way you can tag multiple things. It could be an idea, a TV, an image, it could be all four, it could be whatever you want. And at that point, you no longer need to have these additional structure elements and you've sort of reduced the complexity uh, significantly. And you know you could potentially even do it further by saying, well, technically I could put a URL in a blog post. I may not use it all the time, but I can use it enough that I can get rid of shares, and I can just call it you know something like cool stuff over here. And that way you've really reduced the complexity of your site from you know nine plus content types down to three, and they all make sense. You have products that you know you're selling that have their unique attributes. You have events that you can put in a calendar, you can you know, feed to your Twitter feed, you can do all sorts of things there. And then you have blog posts, which shapeshift a little bit more. There's different shades of blog posts, you know, and you're gonna use taxonomies to sort of differentiate between them, them all. So that's really it, you know, in terms of the very basics of starting your content type design. The idea is to sort of reduce complexity, reduce the number of content types, Reduce the, the labels. Don't make the labels super long. Make them gen general enough that they can fit a whole wide array of, a wide array of things and not get uh, too wordy. Um, to really look at the different requirements for each uh, content type, the different fields, and sort of uh, aggregate and organize them around that. And you know, basically just you know, clean them up. You know, if there are blog, if there are things that you ultimately will never need, if at the end of the day you never have a product on a site, you can certainly keep the content type there, it's not gonna cost you anything, but you don't need it. And if you ultimately just stuff it in a blog post because it's only, you know, one product and therefore you don't need a store catalog, you could ultimately get rid of this one as well, um, which would just bring you back to events and blog posts. So, so there you have it. I hope that sort of at least gets your ideas flowing if you're you know, starting in a Drupal and trying to come up with a, a good design for how your site's gonna be put together, there are way more intricacies than this. And you know, sites can have different requirements that change with time. Some 
clients I've worked with, you know, started off with two, but you know, went up to seven, but then back down to five. And so all that stuff can change, but you really want to try to make a good guess, best guess in the beginning, because in doing so, if you have to delete and, and move around content types, you're gonna to have to move actual content and migrate it or paste it over. And that can be very time consuming. So doing this correctly in the beginning will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, leave me a comment if you have any questions and if you want some further information, just let me know and I'll maybe do a second screencast. So thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day. This is Rick Manelius.